Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video by popular demand I'm going to show you how to create the John Lennon Imagine piano sound in Cubase. But before I show you how to do this, if you're new here and you like these kinds of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and if you're already subscribed and you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up, it really really helps right after this. So a while ago when I was doing the video for my favorite piano libraries, I teased you guys with this John Lennon Imagine Piano and uh, you came in the comments and said, you know, you have to do this video, you have to show us how you create the Imagine Piano sound in Cubase. So that's what I'm going to do on this video and uh, I have to tell you straight away that this is not easy. A piano sound is a very specific thing, it depends more than anything else on the instrument. So on this video I'm going to try and approximate this sound as close as possible using the tools that we have inside Cubase and uh, I'm going to use also a piano library to get as close as possible to the John Lennon Imagine piano sound. That was a very special piano by the way from what I've read and uh, I don't think that there's a specific library that emulates this piano but nevertheless we're going to make it really really close today. So let's start. The first thing that I did was uh, in order to do the sound design I took a snippet of the audio of the actual track so that I have it as a reference and this is right here. I'm not gonna play it because I might get a copyright strike and I don't want that but maybe I'm gonna get a copyright strike anyway because the sound is quite close so maybe the algorithm will light red. Like I said, the first thing is the audio and I tried to also match the tempo a little bit so as you can see I've kind of mapped the tempo of the original song and let's start with the core sound and for this one I'm using the emotional piano from Sound Iron. This doesn't sound like the imagined piano straight out of the box but I found that with the processing that we're going to do it comes really really close. So let's listen to this without any processing first. So it's a very warm sound, it's really big, it has lots of low end. Let me show you how we can get closer. Now, the first thing that we need to do to analyze the sound of the Imagine Piano is to listen very closely. There's a bit of ambience, there's something like a delay, like a slap echo that at the beginning is in the center along with the dry piano sound. And then when the vocals come in, it's spread it. So you have the piano on the right and then the slapback delay or whatever that is, is on the left channel. That's the first thing that I try to emulate. So as you can see, here's my chain and I'm going to explain what I've done step by step. So the first thing that I did was I panned the piano all the way to the right because I'm going for the main section of the song. I'm going to show you how to do this mono as well but for now this was my first thing. So let's open this and uh, I have a filter to begin with. I have a filter at 100 Hz because the original also doesn't have too much low end. That's the first thing that I did. The second thing that I did was I added this reverence reverb here and that's the New York Studio A preset and I found that it comes really really close to the kind of ambience that the Imagine piano sound has. So I only have 13% or 14% of mix, let's see how it sounds. Without. So it's not too much but I want to have a little bit of ambience there. The next thing that I added is the Curve EQ. Now this is really really useful. At first to be honest with you I didn't do it using the Curve EQ. I started listening to this and I was starting sculpting my EQ settings to get closer to the sound. And this I did with the Frequency 2 EQ but then I remembered I was like dumb don't forget about the tools that we have inside Cubase. And one of the very powerful tools that we have inside Cubase is the Curve EQ. Have you ever used it? 
Let me know in the comments down below. It's super powerful. It's from Voxengo and it's included in Cubase. I think it's in Cubase Pro. I'm not sure about the other versions. I have to look it up. But let me show you how I use this. So I'm going to do this from scratch, okay? So the first thing that I did is I added it to the original Imagine event here that I have. And then I went to mode and went average. Now the Voxengo Curvy Q has this option that allows you to match two different audio files using spectrum curves. So let me show you how it works. You have to go to average and then what I did was I just played this So I played it for a few seconds and this is what I got. Then I went to static and match and I went here and I said take. Take a snapshot of this frequency spectrum and then I called it imagine piano. Okay? Now I'm going to take this spectrum and apply it to the piano that I'm using. Now there are many ways that you can do this but what I like to do also for future reference is I like to go and save this profile and then I saved it here. So as you can see, I named it Imagine Piano Spectrum. Good. Then all I need to do is go to my Imagine Piano. I can go here and go Static and Match and load the Imagine Piano Spectrum here. So this is now my reference. And then what I did was I did exactly the same thing. Go Average and play back my own piano sound now. And you can see how much more low-end this piano sound has, right? So now let's make this, for example, red. And now I can go to static and match and say, okay, now I want to take this as my snapshot. And this is Dom's Imagine. And uh, now this is going to be applied to. So reference is the Imagine Piano Spectrum. And this is my own piano that I'm trying to create. So match spectrums. And there we go. The Voxengo Curve EQ gives me a specific curve that will approximate these spectrum. Okay, so now let's listen to what it did. And one thing that I like to do is I like to go for fewer points, maybe 20, so that they're a little bit more smooth. Much spectrums, and there we go. I think now it's a little bit more manageable. So let's listen to what it did. This sounds a little bit excessive right now and I'm going to explain why this is happening. You can see that we have a large boost here at the 4K to like 20K Hertz area. Now, why is that? The reason why Voxengo Curve EQ gives me that is because on the original track there's a lot of noise, a lot of hiss and it doesn't know that it's hiss so it takes that into account and maybe the same goes for the low frequencies. So now comes the time where I have to take over. It did most of the work for me and now I can start adjusting this. So let's play it. So I can grab these and pull them down. And maybe these ones as well. And now let's listen with and without. So now the piano is way, way closer to the original. And if I could play you the original, uh, you would be able to tell very, very easily. But I hope that, you know, you will have a copy of uh, John Lennon's Imagine somewhere. Again, I'm trying to make sure that this video doesn't get pulled down of YouTube. We have this one now. And uh, this is basically what I've done here. I wanted to show you again. But this is the curve. Okay, and then what do we have to do? The next step that I did was I added the Grungalizer. Now, this plugin is really, really useful. And this one, I use it to emulate the tape hiss 
that's exactly that. I want to get as close as possible. So this gives me just the noise. I have turned down the crackle, the distort. I added just a little bit of EQ because I think it gives it a nice touch. And I have like a mix of 40%. Maybe I can go a little bit lower. But now listen to this. And I want to show you something else. I want to show you the spectrum reference here. And this is the Imagine piano that I'm creating. And this is the reference, okay? So I'm going to go like this. And let's check out the curves of the two pianos, okay? First, without the curve EQ. So the orange is the original one. And now... See how much closer they are without it? See? They're much, much closer now, even visually. Of course, the first thing is trust your ears, okay? The spectrum analyzers are great, but the first thing should be your ears. And I trusted my ears first, but the Curvy Q helped me get there very, very quickly. Now, what's next? The next thing that I did was, of course, I went to my mixer and I panned this all the way to the right, okay? And then I created a scent effect all the way up for this piano. And this is what gives us the imagined sound. This scent effect. This has a mono delay, okay? There we go. So, as you can see, very simple settings. I have 205 milliseconds. I tried to approximate it. Obviously, it's not timed. Um, I added a little bit of filtering there, like uh, up to 200 hertz low cut filter and 12K high cut filter and uh, no feedback. Okay, we just want it to ring once. So, let's see how it sounds now. And this, I panned it all the way to the left. So let's see how it sounds now. See? Let's listen just to the delay. And I have the original there as well. I can go all the way wet if I want to. But it doesn't sound right. I think there's still a little bit of the original piano on the left channel still. So that was the first thing. And then I added a reverence reverb here as well. And that's a plate, the plate at two seconds. Um, that's the preset. And I added 20% of this. So, you know, you hear it's it's like it's bouncing. Ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. There is a little bit of a groove there. Then I added the grungalizer again. So just a little bit of noise there. And then I send both channels to a bus, okay? Both imagine and the delay to this bus here. And here I added just the finishing touches, just a little bit of reverence reverb again. I used the New York Studio A, just 4%, just to glue them together. And the frequency EQ. So this one, I'm going to add a little bit of a cut again. And I added just a tiny bit of low end, you know, just a tiny bit of, you know, 100 hertz just to make it a little bit more full. So let's listen to it all together now. So there you go. Now, if you want to recreate the original song, there's another trick that you should know. It starts completely mono at first. So in Cubase, there's a very easy way to do this, to emulate this. So the way to do this is to change your panner from balance panner. This makes the sound go left and right. Okay, this is the standard panner. But what you can do is you can go to stereo combined panner. 
And what this allows you to do is pan your left channel and your right channel individually. So if I go to my left and press zero, it's all the way to the center now, and then to my right and zero, now they're both in the center. So now we're going to get the same exact sound, but in mono. So that's how the song starts. Let's check it out. And then we can spread them. That's what happens on the original song. Of course, when they're in the center, I might need to readjust a little bit the delay. So maybe in this case, I'm going to change, uh, you know, the mix here, maybe change the levels a little bit to make this just right. But this is such a minor task. The big bulk of the sound is already there. And as you can see, you can just be creative. I used only stock plugins. I try to find what's going on first in the sound. And then I tried to find the tools to help me get to that sound. Now the Curvy Q, to be honest with you, I haven't used it for a while, but then I was like, you know what? I know that I can do this manually, but there must be a quicker way and maybe a more accurate way as well. So Curvy Q to the rescue, Cubase to the rescue. Fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope that you had loads of fun with this. This was such a fun video to make. And these are requests that I get from artists or from people that I work with. They say, oh, you know what? Can you create this sound for me? And it's always a challenge, especially when it comes to piano sounds that are so particular and they have such a specific character. No piano sounds the same like another piano. So if you enjoyed these kinds of videos, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification icon, also give it a thumbs up, that really, really helps. And you know what? Share it. Share it with any John Lennon fan. Share it with anyone you feel that they might find it useful or entertaining. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you soon.